Thank you and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm really glad to be here today and to show these uh, preliminary results obtained by this uh, joint work uh, uh, carried out together with our, sorry, with our colleagues from Agritest in Italy on the suitability of FIFAS test uh, uh, for the detection of phytoplasmas associated with grapevine yellows. And uh, as you already know from the previous talk, the grapevine yellows are uh, severe diseases associated to different phytoplasmas worldwide. And uh, so far, uh, the detection and identification has relied mainly on the molecular techniques, um, um, specifically uh, the amplification uh, of uh, 16S ribosoma gene, followed either by RFLP or sequencing analysis, and uh, on the characterization of the different strain identified on the on different non-ribosoma genes. So, but even though these techniques are actually sound, I don't know why it's moving by itself. Uh, I'm sorry, but okay. Uh, I try to to keep the, the, the presentation not moving. It happened also to my presentation. It has an internal. Okay. Part. I will, I will try to keep the, 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 the slide together. Um, so even the, the, the techniques, uh, the molecular techniques are sound and reliable. Actually, the diagnostic uh, method lacks of alternative uh, method cheaper and suitable for large scale monitoring. So, sorry. <laughs> The serological tests, as already uh, Luisa showed, were addressed during uh, this Tropic Safe project in order to overcome the scarcity of the antigenic protein and to have uh, a good and sensitive uh, uh, test uh, to detect uh, the low type of the pathogen with the results comparable to those obtained by molecular identification. But before starting and, uh, the, this project, I have to go back uh, to uh, 2016, when uh, we first uh, succeeded in the isolation and growth of phytoplasmas from uh, uh, field collected uh, infected grapevine samples. And as you can see here from the slide, uh, we um, were able to, uh, to isolate and grow phytoplasmas from the mid ribs of the infected leaves in both liquid and solid media. And the proof of uh, growth of phytoplasma inside the medium was the pH and color change in the liquid tubes, as you can see from the orange on the top to the yellow at the bottom. And the um, appearance of uh, very nice uh, uh, phytoplasma uh, morphology colonies uh, that, uh, uh, that are in the picture under the microscope. And actually they look like uh, with round shape, convex, uh, with dark center and the pale edge. So we were able after DNA extraction and molecular analysis based on the PCR, RFLP and sequencing to detect uh, different phytoplasmas from different samples. So, uh, in, the, uh, in this uh, tropic safe project, we follow the same procedure to in order to uh, isolate and grow different phytoplasmas from different uh, infected samples. And actually, we were able in particular, to isolate uh, the uh, 3J sample from uh, grapevine collected in Italy. And uh, as you can see, uh, we uh, detect the, the, the growth in both liquid medium, where the yellow uh, is uh, in the tube, and uh, very, uh, we observe a very nice uh, um, colonies with very nice morphology. And after uh, phytoplasma identification done by nested PCR or PN sequencing, we could detect the um, phytoplasmas belonging to 16SR1 group, so the asteriellos. So this was the starting point of this project. So we got an asteriello isolate from field infected grapevine, and we want to exploit its use for polyclonal antiserum in order to uh, set up the serological tests such as ELISA and IFAS. And, uh, uh, first of all, I want to show that just the process of raising antiserum. This was done mainly uh, by our colleagues in Agritest. So there are three main steps, antigen production, immunogen preparation, immunization, and antiserum production in order to develop the antibody-based reagents 
sorry, for the analytical test. So the starting point is the antigen production that in our case uh, was uh, the phytoplasma preparation from liquid and solid cell culture. So we did the different dilution and after uh, several centrifugation, we prepare a, a, a mixture of uh, phytoplasma all cells at the concentration of 10, 8, 10, 10 CFU per ml. And we prepare different aliquots for the immunization uh, protocol that uh, was uh, uh, carried out by 60 days standard protocols with three different injection in rapid at time T0, T21, and T42. And it was followed by the um, polyclone antibody characterization and purification. And uh, the antiserum, the produced antiserum was evaluated by Agritest for the productivity, by ELISA titration of the immune and pre immune serum samples against the immunogen, for the specificity to the target by Western blot, dot blot, uh, yes. And uh, there was the techno non specific reaction, the diagnostic sample metrics, and were taken measures to improve the specificity of this antiserum for the choice of suitable method. And for the analytical application, they were purified the IgG protein from antiserum by affinity chromatography. They were evaluated the suitable concentration of the IgG for the sake calibration. And finally, the IgG were labeled to the enzyme um, like alkaline phosphatase to enable the colorimetric reaction. So at the end, the, the, uh, we, um, we try to, uh, to check the suitability of this antibody to the method, to the different uh, serological methods, because usually the suitability is not uh, predictable because it's, it, it has to be evaluated case by case. And in the list, you can see different uh, serological methods that can be used. And uh, so we, taken together the, uh, the what we had. So the, we start from the Asteriello 3J isolate culture from where we prepare the antigenic preparation, the immunization, the rabbit, the purification, the antiserum. So we prepare the IgG for the serological test. And first of all, we uh, check the, um, the uh, specificity of this uh, IgG preparation to uh, their homologue. So we use ELISA test uh, with positive and negative samples in order to uh, um, um, check the, uh, their identity. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, because I, say, I feel like uh, some sound in the background. Sorry. So as you can see from the table, the positive control uh, used was the homologue. So an aliquot of Aster Yellow 3J culture. And uh, uh, after uh, one hour, it showed a very uh, good chemiolescence uh, um, at the uh, ELISA test, while the negative uh, control, it was uh, LT periwinkle, didn't show any, uh, um, any chemiolescence in the plate. So starting with these uh, uh, results, uh, we want to uh, set up a, a, another assay, the IFAS, uh, the immunofluorescent antibody staining assay, and uh, that is uh, um, uh, evaluated under a, a fluorescent microscope. And this is just the, the, the these are just the uh, technical step uh, of uh, this uh, uh, test. Starting from the fixation of samples on the slide, we treat uh, uh, the slide with a specific primary antibody. And uh, after several washing uh, with PBS, we treat again with the secondary label antibody. And after washing with PBS again, we check uh, the fluorescence under uh, um, uh, fluorescent um, bifocal microscope. And this is a technique that is currently used for diagnostics of different bacteria and the mycoplasmas. And the positivity of the test is, uh, is done by the observation under the microscope of these uh, green, green, yellow uh, fluorescent bodies. And, uh, um, so, uh, and the negative is done by mm, red, usually red, um, not well-shaped uh, bodies in the, in the slide. So going to the results, this is what we uh, firstly observed. 
So all the all the pictures, all the samples are in double because uh, they have different dilution. The A corresponds to the undiluted sample and the B correspond to the dilution one per thousand. And starting from the top, we see that uh, uh, with the negative control, we couldn't observe any fluorescence under the microscope. While uh, with the positive control, the homolog Asteriello 3J culture uh, was very nice. Uh, um, the slide with the very nice uh, uh, green, yellow bodies in both undiluted and diluted uh, solution. But going to the, um, to the uh, samples collected from um, plants, uh, here we start with periwinkle infected with two different um, asteriello strains. And uh, uh, as you can see from the left, uh, uh, from the periwinkle one, we could observe in the undiluted sample a very strong yellow um, signal, and that uh, was much more uh, um, clear uh, after dilution, where you can see very nice uh, and uh, uh, round shape uh, uh, yellow fluorescent bodies. While in the second periwinkle, infected with different asteriello strains, we observed uh, several uh, reddish or orange uh, um, bodies, and only after dilution we could uh, detect a few uh, yellow uh, fluorescent uh, bodies. So this uh, means maybe a, a, no, a no specific reaction with the, uh, the, the different strains. And we detect, we uh, use also uh, grapevine infected with Asteriello collected from Italy. And uh, as you can see from the uh, top, in the undiluted sample, we could observe um, this uh, uh, reddish, uh, um, not well shaped uh, um, fluorescent bodies together with some uh, round uh, yellow and green uh, fluorescent bodies that were much more clear in the diluted uh, uh, samples. And no fluorescence was observed from LC grapevine uh, as well as from uh, asymptomatic periwinkle samples. So at the end, we uh, can summarize that the antibodies, uh, the grapevine asteriello antibodies were tested by serological methods to evaluate their suitability for phytoplasma detection plant samples. And actually the IFAS tests show a good specificity to asteriello culture with promising results also with infected plant tissue. And uh, nowadays uh, we are testing a new antiserum uh, that we uh, raise uh, from uh, antigenic preparation from uh, infected coconut palm from Ghana. And as you can see from the, this slide, we got again a good specificity for, for the homologous uh, with the, and in the and undiluted uh, slide, you can see very nice uh, and, uh, no, and uh, uh, huge amount of uh, green fluorescent bodies and as well as in the diluted one. So this I think is the promising results that can be um, a pusher for the uh, detection of uh, uh, these pathogens inside the culture together with the, the plant tissues. And uh, uh, at the end, I would really like to thank uh, uh, Lilia and the collaborators for the nice work and the nice collaboration and all of you for your attention. Thank you. I'm here for any questions.